Welcome to this service of Holy Eucharist for the 12th Sunday after Trinity. You join me today in St John the Evangelist Church in Boreham. And what a treasure this beautiful church is. The theme running through the hymns today reflects Jesus' challenge to take up our cross and follow him. When I was thinking through the Gospel reading for today, Saint Teresa of Calcutta kept coming into mind. She died 25 years ago tomorrow, on the 5th of September in 1997. She really is an example of one who took up her cross and really did follow Jesus, his true disciple. As the price for her own discipleship, Mother Teresa gave herself completely did she first sit down and estimate whether or not she would be able to give all that Jesus would ask of her before she started? No. This tiny woman from the land of state atheism was well aware of her own radical inadequacy. She made no attempt whatever to trusting herself, but relied totally on the Lord, who promised to give her all she needed in order to be faithful to him. And so she was, and so she was. Mother Teresa lived and bore witness to unconditional charity. She meditated on the love of Christ, of every human person, and especially the poorest of the poor. And so we come together to worship today, reminded that we meet in this virtual space in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We hear words from Jesus. Take up your cross and follow me. These words scare us. We know what taking up the cross meant for him. We do not feel able to sacrifice our lives. We're not even ready on most days to sacrifice small things for the sake of the kingdom. Today, O oh God, we confess our timidity, our weakness, our fears and our hesitations. Almighty God, our, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. The Lord enrich you with his grace, and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble, and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers, and absolve you from your offences, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. We respond to God's mercy by singing the Gloria.
let us be still before the presence of the Lord. Almighty and ever-living God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray and to give more than either we deserve or desire. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask, but through the merits and meditation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one oh God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Sheila reads from the Old Testament. The first reading comes from Deuteronomy chapter 30. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways and observing his commandments, decrees and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now large crowds were travelling with him, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which one of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who sill it will begin to ridicule it saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May it be given to me to speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Anyone who does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. In today's Gospel, Jesus seems to be doing all he can to put people off from following him. No sane, reasonable person, he seems to say, would seriously consider becoming his disciple. A disciple of his must hate family and even one's own life. Now, at this point, we rush to the learned footnotes, the concordance, anything that will help us. And we read with relief that hate here is a Semitic idiom. It refers not to negative emotion, but to preference, to prefer, to favour, to like better. Nevertheless, the language Jesus uses is deliberately provocatively strong, even violent. It would be no less shocking for a contemporary Jew than it is for us, because their religion puts enormous emphasis on love for one's own family. Then Jesus says that any disciple of his must be ready to carry their cross. This is an invitation to willingly undergo the most horrible, humiliating, extreme manner of torture, an agonising death, the death of a common criminal, and a very effective means of terrifying the locals. Finally, to follow Jesus, you have to give up all your possessions, otherwise you cannot become one of my disciples. Jesus spoke these words on his final journey to Jerusalem. He addressed them in the first place to those who were with him. Those caught up in the excitement and enthusiasm of the crowds. Oh yes, they were happy to follow the superstar celebrity, eager to witness yet more sensational miracles of healing and hoping above all for imminent political liberation from the occupying Roman tyranny. But no, discipleship of Jesus is not easy, it costs. St. Luke's Gospel is the only one to report the two rather strange comparisons Jesus makes here, the man building a tower and the king preparing to set out for war. It's as if Jesus here turns and confronts the fickle rabble.
Do you want to follow me? He asks. Think, it will cost you more than you bargained for. Are you ready or able to pay the price? And today's gospel gives us the chance to affirm once again to ourselves, to one another, to the Lord. And yes, do we want to follow Jesus? Do we want to be his disciples? For he is Lord. He died for us and rose again from the dead. He is the Son of God. He is our Saviour, our Redeemer, our life, our light, our salvation, our hope, our love, our glory, our joy. He's not a threat to us, not a harsh tyrant, not a cruel master. No, Jesus came to heal, to liberate, to lift us up. He offers to take away what we want and need him to get rid of, to be free from. That is, above all, our sins and also our worldly attachments, those things that weigh us down in their place. What does he offer us? The share in God's own divine sonship, true holiness, the fullness of eternal life, union with God in heaven. Wow, just wow. If we understand this, then we see that the demands spelled out in today's gospel are actually consoling rather than frightening because we want Jesus to be not just one feature in our life, taken more or less seriously, but to be truly our all. We want to belong to him totally, to have his life in us, to be filled with his spirit, to share his relationship with his father. Today reminds us that the choice to follow him is the most radical decision we could take in our life. It touches us more deeply than, for example, the decision to join or affiliate with any political party, or to move house or change jobs, or even get married. Jesus must be more important to us than anything else. Yes, let us say it loudly. Let us say it boldly. Jesus is more important to us than our comfort, our status, our health, and even more than life itself. Amen. Take up thy cross and follow me. I hear the blessed Saviour call. How can I make a lesser sacrifice when Jesus gave his all? This next hymn is Fanny Crosby's wonderful old hymn, Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross, set to a more contemporary beat. Let me know what you think. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There are precious Okay. 
once again for your continued support of these online services and for the ministry and mission of the river we have benefits. Thank you. Be present, be present Lord Jesus, our risen High Priest, and make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your son, Jesus Christ, to be our saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels, praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine and poured may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and, taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St. Aldham 
Dennis, John the Evangelist, Mary the Virgin, St. Teresa of Calcutta, and all the saints, to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in, in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. participate with your people in these holy mysteries we pray you now to grant your gift of spiritual communion with trust in your faithfulness and your abiding love through jesus christ our lord amen jesus is the lamb of god who takes away the sin of the world blessed are those who are called to his supper lord I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to read the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
Eucharist, you have set aside our sins and given us your healing. Grant that we, who are made whole in Christ, may that bring that healing to this broken world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I began the service thinking about Mother Teresa of Calcutta and how she embraced radical poverty and became, in a sense, the richest and most powerful woman in the world. She renounced her own family and country and landed up as a sort of universal mother. Have you noticed how her title of mother still sticks even though she was canonised and made Saint Teresa. She will always be known as mother. She could be mother to anyone and everyone because she herself knew and walked in the love of God for her. To close the service, I share these words from a Celtic prayer. When I look at the blood all I see is love, love, love. When I stop at the cross, I can see the love of God, but I can't see competition. I can't see hierarchy. I can't see pride or prejudice or the abuse of power. I can't see lust for power. I can't see manipulation. I can't see rage or anger or selfish ambition. I can't see unforgiveness. I can't see hate or envy. I can't see stupid fighting or bitterness or jealousy. I can't see empire building. I can't see self-importance. I see surrender, sacrifice, salvation, humility, righteousness, faithfulness, grace, forgiveness, love, love, love. When I stop at the cross, I see the love of God. And may the love of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you today and until Jesus comes or calls. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn, a particular favourite of mine and one I've used before on these online services. It doesn't have the feel of a usual recessional hymn, but it offers us a timely reminder as we enter another week of the cost of our salvation. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace. And rise in glory. The service is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Christ all the days I live of this life on earth to give to him complete control of body and of soul follow him follow him yield your life to him he has conquered death he is king of kings accept the joy which he gives to those who yield their lives to him I want to learn to speak Open my life and let him in for
joy will then be mine. Follow him, follow him, yield your life to him. He has conquered death, he is king of kings. Accept the joy which he gives to those who yield their lives to him. I want to learn to speak of him. My life must show that he lives in me. My deeds, my thoughts, my words. Must speak of all his love for me. Follow him, follow him, yield your life to him. He has conquered death, he is king of kings. Accept the joy which he gives to those who yield their lives to him. I want to learn to read his word, for this is how I know the way to live. It is necessary for us to have that very close contact with Christ and the Blessed Sacrament. Because Jesus in the appearance of bread and Jesus in the appearance of the broken bodies of our poor is the same Jesus. And so it is necessary for us to be very, very closely united to him through prayer and sacrifice to be able to touch him in the poor. Take up thy cross and follow me. I hear the blessed Saviour call. How can I make a lesser sacrifice when Jesus gave? 